Today I want to share something a little more personal, how I got from this to this. Whoa! I have six simple steps that will assist you in getting to that. Whether you're just starting off or been drawing for years and you want to improve your art in some way, these are the six steps that I found in uh, how I progressed my art through the years. Step one, which you most likely already have, is finding your goals as an artist. Now I'm gonna get a little bit more specific with this, but basically what your goal is, is to find out which artworks speak to you from different artists. Just get a range of artists. For example, I've got Anato Finstark, Patrick Garnas, Glenn Rain, heaps more, heaps more. But the main thing that I wanted wasn't to copy exactly their art style, it was to get parts of it that I really enjoy. And what I found that fits with all of them is the painterly style. I wanted a more raw painterly look with brush strokes similar to the Titus piece. And you see that progress as I show you my art throughout the years. The lighting, I want. I wanted exaggerated lighting, I wanted the colors to be vibrant and that's something that I feel like has become my sort of signature in my artworks more recently as I push it further and further and that's the main thing. You need to find a bunch of artists and a bunch of artworks that speak to you, that you're attracted to and you need to find why you're attracted to them, little pieces and then collect all that information, figure out how they do it, figure out why you like it, and slowly start incorporating it into your artwork. There is a storm brewing outside. That's why it's so weirdly lit. All right, step two, you wanna simplify. You don't have to start off with a masterpiece. When I began, I didn't tackle a full body piece. I tackled portraits, but more specifically, I actually tackled armor. My, one of my first, uh, level up pieces um, that after practicing for ages of just grayscale studies was a Darth Vader piece shown here. I started off with that because I didn't want too many contours on the face and getting the shades of the face right. I brought it back and as soon as I did that I started learning a little bit more. Then I started paying attention to smaller details. I got into side profiles which is a lot easier than any sort of dynamic image what basically what I did at the start was I got an image that I liked took it into Photoshop turned the saturation all the way down so it was completely in grayscale and I basically looked at the values and started learning from the values there I copied it across and eventually started making changes and my own versions of what I'm seeing at first it was pretty much a direct copy just because I, I wasn't comfortable with modifying it because I didn't understand. But after a while, it just started becoming a bit more natural to me. What is he doing? He's beginning to believe. And that's when I was able to strip it back and do like a painterly style. So that's what you need to do. Make sure that when you do stuff to practice, to study or an artwork is do not make it a massive thing. Do not make it a huge masterpiece don't put so much weight on yourself just bring it back and then you'll 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 slowly progress it that's just the way it is like uh learning to walk before you run once you get the basics down it's all uphill from there step three and this is actually very very important i personally think is uh prioritize key elements of the style you want to master for me my priority was lighting that's why i decided to focus on painting in grayscale because it's completely in values so that's just my style I paint in grayscale first and then I add the colors afterwards but I have to make sure that the lighting is down pat there's different ways you can do it you can want to be a master at line art you can want to be a master at just painting in color without any line art it's entirely up to you but you have to decide what key elements you want and what you want to enjoy Step four, challenge yourself. Plateaus are real, artists deal with them all the time. I hit my first one when I was stuck doing portraits for about a year. I was just doing portraits, I got good at them, I got comfortable, but I wasn't growing. 
It was only until I decided to push myself and create concepts of characters, original concepts, that's the Gotham City series that you see here, that this that was the moment where I started pushing myself more and more and more and more and eventually I got out of a rut that I didn't even know I was in. It's all about challenging yourself and pushing yourself. By doing that, you figure out your flaws in anatomy, your perspective. It's things that, that I found things that I had never noticed before because I had only been doing portraits. So that's the, the key thing. Whenever you feel comfortable, you need to pivot. You need to try something challenging, try something different. That's the only way you'll learn. Comfort is the enemy of growth. Now, step five. Step five is a very, very important one. And I need every artist to understand whether it's me saying it or someone else saying it. But I think this needs to be spoken about a lot more. And it's the fact that, that you will never reach your final goal. And that's okay. It's actually a good thing. It's gonna sound a little cliche, but really it's a fact. Art is a journey and the closer you get to the goal, the more it will expand. It's like a never ending, like just moving the goalpost forward each time. You get to a certain spot, you realize that it's possible for you to get there. And then all of a sudden you've got all these new goals and new things that you wanna do. You will never really hit the moment where you go, okay, that's enough. That's what keeps it exciting. That's what that's what I love about art is that there is no ceiling. It just continues, it pivots. You might get good at, or I might get good at painting uh, now, but then in a couple of years, I wanna switch to completely different, like anime style art, manga style art, or, or even more refined, just cartoony stuff. It, it, it all depends. I could even transform all my art skills and turn them into physical products. It's it's all about changing. The final and sixth step um, is going to be annoying, but I have to stress it enough because I'm sure all of you have heard it. I don't like where this is going. And that is practice. Push forward. It's the most important thing. I know a lot of artists hate hearing practice, 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 practice makes perfect. Practice this, practice that. Just practice, but practice in a way that, man, I'm losing my mind I'm saying practice so many times. Um, don't think of it as practice. Don't think of it as studying. Just create art. That's, that's what practicing is. So continue doing it, continue doing what you're doing, enjoy what you're doing, love what you're doing, and be the best artist that you can. Follow me on Instagram if you want some inspiration. If you want an artist to talk to, I respond to messages. And yeah, that's that's the final step. The final step is literally just practice. And there you go. Six steps that help me improve as an artist and continue to push myself. And I'll continue to use those six steps. I'll continue to expand on them no matter what. Hopefully some of these resonate with you, whether you're sketching, painting, or working digitally, it doesn't matter. If you like this video, please hit the thumbs up. Subscribe if you enjoy more of these videos. Keep creating and remember it's all about the journey guys. I'll see you next time.